Hello, seniors. It's been a while, and I'm glad to see you all again. Another journey is yet to overcome. Let's step ahead in learning another exciting area of science that concerned with the study of inanimate natural objects, including physics, chemistry, astronomy, and related subjects. Students, it's time to learn physical science. Our lesson today is Light as a Wave and the Subparticle Part 2. We have these contents, or the contents of this module are various light phenomena and Hertz radio pulses. At the end of this module, you are expected to explain various light phenomena such as your reflection on the concave and convex sides of a spoon that looks different, mirage, light from a red laser passes more easily through red cellophane than green cellophane, clothing of certain colors appear different in artificial light and in sunlight, halo, sand dogs, primary rainbows, secondary rainbows, and supernumerary bows, why clouds are usually white and rain clouds dark, and why the sky is blue and sunsets are red. And also, you have to describe how Hertz produce radio pulses. Let's talk about the various light phenomena. You have learned that the rainbows are formed due to the dispersion of light in water droplets that act as prism. You have also learned that the blue sky, the reddish sunset, and the white and dark clouds are products of the scattering of light in the atmosphere. The rainbow-colored soap bubbles are due to the interference of light and the bright fringes and dark bands in shadows are results of the diffraction of light. In the previous lesson, you knew that light reflects or bounces back as it hits an opaque object such as a mirror and transmits through transparent objects such as glass and lenses. Light refracts or bends as it enters from one medium to another with different optical density. You also knew that the colors we see on the object are the color of light that is reflected by the object to our eyes. The green color of the leaves is due to the green light that is reflected by the leaves to our eyes, and as the leaves absorb all other colors, only green is reflected. These behaviors of light produce spectacular light phenomena that we often see in our daily life, and sometimes we may not notice it. In this lesson, you are expected to explain various light phenomena such as your reflection on the concave and convex side of a spoon, mirage, halo, sand dogs, primary and secondary rainbows, and supernumerary bows. You are also expected to explain why a red laser light passes through easily on red cellophane than on a green one, and why colors of clothing appear different in artificial light as compared to natural sunlight. The back side of the spoon represents the convex mirror, while the front side of the spoon represents the concave mirror. Recalling the images formed in a convex and concave mirror, in a convex mirror, reflected light rays diverge as if it originates from the imaginary focus of the mirror, thus producing a small, upright and laterally reverse image just as what you observe. The image is upright because the point of intersection of the extended reflected light rays through which the image is formed is above the principal axis. For a concave mirror, incident light rays parallel to the principal axis bend towards the focus of the mirror as it reflects thus producing a small laterally reverse and upside down or inverted image. The image is inverted because the point of intersection of the real reflected light rays is below the principal axis. 
Colored cellophane acts as filters for allowing certain colors to pass through while absorbing the other colors. Red laser light passes through more easily in red cellophane than in green one because much of the red light is absorbed in the green cellophane. Light is transmitted in transparent materials without being scattered at an angle of 90 degrees. Otherwise, light is refracted, but not 100% of the incident light is transmitted. Some are absorbed and others are reflected. When light hits an object, some of its frequencies are absorbed and some are reflected, such in the case of green leaves. Only green frequency is reflected, while the other frequencies are absorbed by the object. The green light is reflected in our eyes and we see it green. When all frequencies of light are reflected, we see a white object such as the white clouds, but when all frequencies of light are absorbed, we see the object black. Colored objects have pigments capable of reflecting specific colors of light. A strawberry reflects the red frequency and absorbs the other. But comparing the results of reflection from natural sunlight and an artificial light source such as from a LED light, the color intensities are different. The strawberry would appear pale red in an artificial light because it contains less amount of red light as compared to the natural sunlight. Mirage is a natural occurrence produced by the refraction of light as it travels between hot and cold air. It is mostly observed on a straight highway at noon time when the sun heats up the road to high temperature. It is an illusion of water on the highway on a very hot sunny day. Halos and sand dogs are optical phenomena that happen when light is reflected or refracted by ice crystals in the atmosphere. Halos are formed around the sun or the moon when ice crystals refract light twice, making 22 degrees refraction from its original direction. The figure or the photo the left shows sun halo what while at the right is an example of a moon halo. The refraction occurs in hexagonal ice crystals mostly found in the cirrus clouds. Sand dogs have the same mechanism as the formation of halos. However, they are most visible when the sun is near the horizon. As light enters the face side of the hexagonal ice crystals, Light exits at 22 degrees on the other side towards the ice. Max sun or parhelion are the other terms for sun dogs. You know that rainbows are formed from the dispersion of light on droplets of water in the atmosphere. When water droplets refract light between 40 degrees to 42 degree angle towards the ice, a primary rainbow is formed. We may see a second rainbow which is fainter than the first. This happens when two reflections are made inside the water droplets. Secondary rainbow is formed when water droplets refract the light at an angle between 54 degrees and 52 degrees, making the colors in reverse order. Supernumerary bows are found in the inner part of the primary rainbow due to the inference of the wave crest. There are usually greenish purple colors. Again, the primary rainbow, the secondary rainbow, and the supernumerary bows. Did you know that a rainbow always appears opposite the sun? So the next time you want to see a rainbow after the rain shower, let your back face the sun and let your eyes wander in the lower sky. In the previous topic, you have learned about light phenomena that are any observable events that resulted from the interaction of light and matter. Various light phenomena are formed due to the interaction of light from the sun or moon in the atmosphere, clouds, dust, water, and other particulates. 
Light phenomena include rainbows, halos, the color of clouds, and the sky. Now, let's have the discussion about the Hertz radio pulses. Heinrich Rudolf Hertz 1857 to 1894 was a German physicist who became the first person to transmit and receive controlled radio waves. He was the first to conclusively prove the existence of electromagnetic waves theorized by James Clerk Maxwell's electromagnetic theory of light. Hertz proved the theory on how to transmit and receive radio pulses using experimental procedures. He planned a set of experiments to test Maxwell's hypothesis. This apparatus consists of polished brush knobs, each connected to an induction coil and separated by a tiny gap over which sparks could leap. Between 1885 and 1889, when he was professor of physics, he produced electromagnetic waves in the laboratory and measured their length and velocity. He showed that the nature of their vibration and their susceptibility to reflection and refraction were the same as those of light and heat waves. As a result, he established beyond any doubt that light and heat are electromagnetic radiations. The electromagnetic waves were called Hertzian and later radio waves. In 1889, Hertz was appointed professor of physics at the University of Bonn where he continued his research on the discharge of electricity in rarefied gases. That's the end of our lesson today. It's been my pleasure teaching you one of the amazing topics of physical science and I really hope you learned something from this video lesson. Thank you and may God bless us all. Let's meet again in our next video.